Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we're doing another Spotlight on Plugins. And I couldn't be more excited because we're talking about JW Change today, which could very well be the most important third-party plugin that you could possibly get for Finale. And I do not say that lightly. Uh, I like to consider JW Change the sort of Swiss army knife of plugins in Finale. Now the concept is very similar to what you have in Finale already in the utilities menu. You have this uh, item here called Change and a bunch of different things. And I've talked about these items in other videos before. And if you're not familiar with this, uh, with these items, you really should be because these in themselves are very powerful. The JW Change takes this utilities change items and just amplifies it by like a hundred thousand. There's just an, an immense amount of things that you can do. If you do not have this plugin, I highly encourage you to do that. If you not have, do not have the JW plugin suite, you really should download them, and I will put a link in the description so that you can do so. But if you do have them, uh, it is the JW plugins, and it is this one, JW change dot dot dot. Now, one caveat about this plugin is that uh, this plugin was last updated in 2017 when version 25 was still active. Uh, it works great in 25 and 26. However, there are some issues in version 27, at least on a Mac for me. Um, but, uh, you know, this plugin has not been updated since 2017. Jari Williamson, the developer of the JW plugins, has sort of uh, just taken a break from the plugins or something. He's just hasn't been actively uh, updating these things. And uh, anything that we can do as a community to encourage him to get back to it would be much appreciated because this JW change plugin alone is worth its weight in gold. And the whole JW plugin set is just invaluable. So any good vibes we can send to him to get these things um, you know, up to date, especially for 27, that would just be amazing. There are some issues with the uh, Smufel fonts with the JW change as well, which I'll talk about as we're going. But um, it works pretty good on non Smufel version 27 fonts, and uh, you know, anything in 25 and 26 is going to be great as well. Now, the principle is rather simple. You basically think of what it is that you need to change in your score, make the selection, whether it's the whole score or just you know a few measures or whatever it is, and then go into JW Change and figure it out what it is you want to change. Now, you can see there's a whole bunch of categories here, accidentals, articulations, augmentation dots, beams, beam stubs, chord symbols, expressions, fretboards, hairpins, note entries, note heads, wrestlers, smart shape lines, stems, syllables, and tuplets. All right, so you decide what it is you're working on, let's say articulations, and then open that triangle and you'll get a, a whole bunch of things that you can do with those articulations, including resize them, you can do things with position, you can delete certain ones or, you know, a bunch of different things. Now, this is going to be completely different from category to category. So if I open the uh, beams uh, category here, you'll see a completely different set of options. Well, there will be some similar things. You get resize. Uh, but not quite as, as much as you do in the articulations, right? And every category is going to be completely different. There's a completely different set of things that you can do within each particular category. In addition to that, within each item that you can do, now when you select something, you'll see a bunch of things happen over here, and it's you know this is related to what it is that you're changing. Uh, you also get a set of filters on the bottom right, which is incredibly important and makes this plugin even more powerful. It's insane what you can do here. So you can do things like filter for specific entries. So if you wanted to just change the grace notes or just change the notes that appear after, or oh, sorry, I'm dealing with accidentals, just uh, change the accidentals that appear after the rest or on quarter beats um, or a specific accidental type that you want to change uh, or within a certain layer, you can do that. These filters are, you know, you can see how many there are. Um, and they're also specific to the category. So you have a certain set of filters for the accidentals. You're going to have a different set of filters for the articulations. So now we're dealing with connected entries, articulation type. Again, you have layers. Most of them have some sort of layer filter. Uh, in the augmentation dot, you have entries, notes, and rests. Uh, let's see what else we have. In the beams, you have a different set of filters that you can uh, choose from. So, uh, you know, the, the possibilities are just endless if you consider how many functions there are within all 17 of these categories, and then consider that you have entire lists of different filters that can be set up in different ways. And these filters have not only, you know, all of these options, but if you choose resize articulations in tuplets, 
you can choose opposite. So now you're choosing resize articulation in everything except the tuplets by choosing the opposite here. So uh, again, there's like there's got to be a million combinations of of filters and functions and what you can do here. I, I couldn't possibly cover every you know permutation of all of these things in, in even 300 videos. I couldn't cover it all. So the principle here is I'm going to tell you I'm going to show you how this works generally, and then the idea is that if you have something in your score that needs to be changed in, in a mass selection type of way, look to JW Change, see if you can figure it out. What it is you need to do? I need to change something about the note heads. All right, so find the note heads. What is it you need to change? I need to do something with the size and then figure out which ones you want to change. I, it, chances are there is a way to do it in this plugin. Um, I can't possibly tell you everything that's here, uh, but just know that it's here. And if you need to do something and you, you don't want to do it, you know, one note entry at a time or something, look to this plugin. There's a really, really, really good chance that you can do it from here. Now I'm going to go through and give you some a few examples, but I just want to cover the rest of what's in this window. First of all, you have a reset button on your filter. So if you had made some changes here and then you know you come back to it, you can hit that reset and it will reset all of the filters. There is a search function here. Um, so if you search for something like resize, uh, it will give you all of the options for resizing things. Uh, you can search for things like visibility or something. This is a little tricky because you kind of have to know exactly what it is you're searching for, but um, uh, this would be uh, available to you as well. And then there's a couple other buttons here. There's this little dot, dot, dot button and this little sequence editor. Now the sequence editor is something that definitely does not work in version 27, at least on a Mac. Um, it's, it crashes finale all the time. So I, I am going to show you this, but I'm going to show you it later in version 26. All right. So I'll get to get to that at the end of the video. Uh, but this little dot, dot, dot button gives you some options here. And there's a uh, sort of these, these options for use full filters or use basic filters. The basic filters will sort of uncheck a whole bunch of stuff so that you don't have to necessarily sort through, uh, everything, you know, within that, that category. I don't really see why you'd need to do that. I mean, just have them all there. You might as well. Uh, it's not a whole that much to to uh, to sort through. And then there's three options here. I'll just talk about briefly the safety question. There are some functions that will ask you a question before you do it because it's a major change. And this will say, do you really want to do this? And you have to click OK. Uh, if you uncheck that, you won't get that warning. There is a sort tree items alphabetical uh, alphabetically option. So within all of these categories, you can see that they're not alphabetized. There's I don't know the precise um, rationale but behind the order here, but maybe it's you know the most likely thing that you would do first, maybe. Uh, but you can choose to sort them alphabetically, and then you'll see that when you open the, the uh, arrow here, these will all be sorted alphabetically. So that's what that does. This window shade option, this is something that also does not work in version 27. Uh, it's kind of cool in version 26. What it does is that, you know, you have an, when the window is active, it will show you everything. But if you click away from it into the score, you can see that it kind of grays out and it becomes inactive. What will happen is this will window shade up and you'll just get this little skinny bar so that it's sort of out of the way and not blocking your music. And then as soon as you click it, uh, it will open up again. Again, this doesn't quite work in version 27. That's another thing that needs to get uh, a little TLC. So that's basically what's going on in the visual options, the little dot, dot, dot here. Um, some of it works in 27, some of it doesn't. And uh, some of it, some more of it may work in Windows. I'm not actually sure uh, if some of these things that don't work in 27 on a Mac will work in 27 on a Windows. That's always a possibility. All right, so now let's get to the good stuff. I'm going to show you some examples of what can be done here, some common things that you may come across that I think is really handy. One thing is I've got this vocal line here, and you can see some harmony. And basically what I wanted to do here is I wanted to write a melody with an alternate melody on top, a sort of alternate higher melody, right? So basically I wrote all of the notes, and what I want to do is just make the top notes uh, 75%. Now, in order to do this in Finale, you can't use the utilities change because you can you can only change the, the size of the whole notes. And by doing this to 75%, you'll see that it changes everything, both notes and in, in all the chords, plus the, the beams and the flags and everything. So that's not really what you want to do. In order to do this manually in Finale, you'd have to use the resize tool and be very precise. 
I'm even going to zoom in here about clicking right on the note head, change that to 75. And then you have to do that for the entire uh, passage, which obviously is going to be extremely tedious, particularly if it's way more than four bars. But what we can do is use uh, the JW change for this. So just select that passage. And what I want to change are note heads, right? And I'm going to go to resize and I'm going to say 75%. But I don't want to resize all of the note heads. I just want to resize the top note heads. Well, again, these filters are amazing and will do exactly what you need. So you just choose top where it says note heads and click apply. And you've just uh, changed the top all the top note heads only to 75%. So now you have your little uh, cue alternate uh, melody right there. So, you know, that's a, a huge, a huge deal. You don't have to click on each one with the resize tool. Let's look at something else here in my piano part. I've got this little triplet figure, and this is sort of a, a longstanding bugaboo about Finale, the way that it does these little beam stubs in triplets. It's, it's kind of wrong. It's technically not wrong, but it really is wrong. The beam stub should go to the left where the, the dot dotted notes are. But Finale doesn't do this correctly, and there's no way to fix this. There's no option in the document options that will, you know, that you can set in tuplets or beams or anything. There's no option that will deal with this specific scenario. So, again, there is a way to do them individually. With the special tools, you can choose this uh, beam stub tool and you know manually flip them all. But again, that's going to take a long time. So we can use JW change for this. Now I've set this passage up specifically like this so I can show you how to filter for this. So I only want to do this on the triplets, right? I only want to change the beam stubs going to the left for the triplets, not for the non-triplets. So let's go into beam stubs. We're going to go to direction and you have left or right. This is your only options here. Uh, and for what for the filters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose entries and I'm going to find in tuplets, right? So now we're only going to change the beam stubs, make them go left in the tuplets, and it's going to ignore everything else. And so just like that, you can you can fix these figures. And imagine doing this over you know an entire file if you, if this figure comes up a lot. So again, really handy with the 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 filter and everything. It's just a it's just you know it saves it'll save you a lot of time. Now in this cello part, I may have had a overzealous composer that wrote in a lot of articulations and then changed his mind later, deciding that that was kind of silly. So uh, let's see if we can do some stuff with JW change. And again, I just got a measure here, but imagine this over 16 measures and how quick this will go. Um, instead of, let's say we're going to delete the tenutos here, right? And instead of kind of going through and deleting them one at a time, we can just go into the articulation section in JW change, go to delete, and there is an articulation types filter. So we're just going to find the tenuto. And then that's all there is to it. Just press apply. And this is one of those times where we'll warn you about it and you'll say, yes, I really want to delete that. And now all of your tenutos have gone away. But we're going to take this a step further. He, the composer has also decided that uh, he doesn't want the accents on all of these notes. He only wants the accents on the beats of the of the measure. So on beat one, on beat two, on beat three, and beat four, right? So how would we get rid of all of those other accents? Well, we're going to do it like this. We're going to go to accent. We're going to filter just the accent because we want to leave the staccatos alone. And where it says connected entries, what we're going to do is we're going to choose on beats. But we don't want to delete the accents on the beats. We want to delete everything except the beats. So this is where we're going to use the opposite checkbox, right? So now I'm deleting accents on everything except the beats. And press apply, and it'll give you the warning. And there you go. So just like that, you've managed to <laughs> clean up these uh, articulations uh, in a couple of processes using the right filters and the right um, uh, delete function here. Now, if you've ever created uh, feathered beams in Finale, you, you may know how to do that using the special tools. It's kind of a pain because you kind of have to get it exactly right. But JW Change actually has a nice uh, option for this. In the uh, beams category here, there is a feathered beams option here. And what's really cool is it gives you the option for the accelerando version or the retar uh, retardando version. Let's choose the retardando. And in this case, it's all, you know feathered beams can only obviously be on uh, beamed notes that have more than one beam, right? But I've got two separate things here. I've got uh, um, 30 second beams and I've got 16th beams. I want to leave the 16th beams alone and only feather the uh, 30 second beams here, right? So this is where we're going to try uh, another filter here. And we're going to choose the 
we're going to choose the beam start entries and we're going to find the one that says uh, 32nd note. So this is going to allow us to only feather the 32nd beams and it'll leave the 16th beams alone. And you'll see just like that, you've created feather beams really, really quickly without having to go through that whole process with the special tools. So if you ever do anything with feathered beams, this is, uh, again, it's an invaluable thing that does it pretty quickly. Now let me show you something else. that I, This is something I do often. I'm going to move over to one of my parts here. Um, I use these little VS markings for to help with page turns in parts all the time. So I've got this one on the cello part, and I've got another one over here on the piano part. Now the problem is these VS, these VS markings um, will also appear in the score, which is not what you want. And the way to fix this is to shift double click and you know, choose where it says show on, choose parts only. And again, you'd have to do this individually one at a time. Well, there is actually a function in JW change that can take care of this. Now you have to set this up in a specific way. You actually have to have a special category for that expression, which I've set up. You can see I've got my own VS category and it's got the VS marking in there. And uh, so I'm just going to do this. Now again, imagine I've got like a you know 40, 50 page score and I've got dozens of these VS markings in different uh, parts and everything. You can just select the entire score in score view, go into your uh, JW change plugin, and we're going to find the one in expressions called score part assignment. And this is usually set up here. Um, I should mention that, by the way, that these <laughs> these plugins will actually remember the last thing that you had set. Um, so you do have to be careful uh, every time you go in here. You do have to check all of the options. But anyway, so we're in the score part assignment, which is basically doing what I just showed you, but again in a mass scale, not not just one at a time. And I'm going to choose parts only. And what I'm going to do is filter for the categories, and you can filter for the VS category. So now it's only going to take those expressions that exist in the VS category that exist within the selection and change them to parts only. So I press apply and you can see them disappear in the score. There used to be one here and one here, but they still exist in my cello part and my piano part. So that's another nifty thing that you can do. And then one more uh, example I'm gonna give you here. I'm gonna go over to this cello part here. And I've set this scale up uh, in a specific way. Really what I want here is a microtonal uh, chromatic scale. I want D, D quarter sharp, D sharp, E quarter flat, E, um, e quarter sharp, etc. So I want this uh, a quarter sharp. I want basically a quarter sharp chromatic scale right here, right? Now again, you can use the special tools here and choose the accidental thing and double click and change this over here to get to your quarter sharp. Uh, but again, over a larger passage, you can do this much easier in JW change. So just select those measures, JW change, and we're going to deal with something in accidentals. And uh, what we're going to deal with is the custom shape. This is what's going to allow us to change the shape of the accidentals. And what's really neat about this is you can filter for accidental types, and there is an option for with parentheses. This is exactly why I set this up in this specific way where I have these sharps, uh, where I wanted the quarter sharps, in, uh, in parentheses, because I knew that I could filter it this way. So I'm going to choose with parentheses as my filter here, and then I'm going to choose the symbol. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to find my quarter sharp, which I believe is over here. Select that one. And so now we're changing all of the with parentheses accidentals into these quarter sharps. And sometimes you have to go back. Let's do that one more time. Quarter sharp. There we go. And hit apply. And you can see that I've just changed all of the sharp parentheses into quarter sharps. And again, now I want to change the flats into quarter flats. So all we have to do is instead of with parentheses, I'm just going to choose flat. Again, it's saying I want to change just the accidentals that are flats, and we're going to change it into quarter flat, which is all the way down here. Press select, and then press apply. And just like that, you've got your um, chromatic quarter tone uh, passage right here, right? So this is this requires a little bit of ingenuity. You have to know to set up those uh, parentheses in a certain way. But you know, if you know that this option exists, you can do that and, and kind of make quick work of this. 
this particular function I should mention um, is also not going to work in a SMUFL file in 27. This file that I have been working on actually is a non-SMUFL file. Uh, the problem with the JW change and, and it not being updated for version 27 and the SMUFL fonts is that when you press the select button, you're getting the symbol selection dialog box. And, you know, this is the Meister font. This is not the Finale Meister font, which is the SMUFL version. Um, and uh, if this was a SMUFL file, the JW change, unfortunately, does not know how to recognize the characters in, in this particular symbol selection box because it's actually relying on these numbers. I don't know the specific reason, but uh, maybe there's a, a max number that the plugin can deal with in this uh, particular field right here. And with the SMUFL fonts, there's 4,500 characters or something. So uh, most of them are, are well above the, the limit of this box. I think that's the reason why it's limited like this. But anyway, also say that these particular things where you're dealing with shapes and font uh, shapes and everything, this will not work with a SMUFL file. So again, this is just something that also needs to be updated um, uh, for version 27. Okay, so you can kind of see the power of this. Again, I, I couldn't possibly go through every possibility of what's available to you. It's just one of those things that you have to look at it and say, okay, I have something here that needs to be changed in mass, and how do I do it? Chances are there's a really good chance that there's a way to do it uh, with this JW change. So. You know, now that you kind of know how it works, hopefully you can, you know, find what it is you need to do and, and do it. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to talk about the sequence editor, but I can't do that in version 27 on the Mac because, as I said, it, it crashes Finale every, almost every time. So I'm going to switch over to version 26. Uh, I will be back with you shortly, and I'll see you in a second. All right, so here we are back in version 26.3, and I'm just going to show you what that sequence editor can do. So let's go back into the JW change plugin and look at the sequence editor. Now, when I press the sequence editor button, you're going to probably see this uh, window uh, warning up here that says there's an empty apply history. The apply history is empty. To be able to create new sequences, first run the tasks normally so they appear in the recent apply history. Uh, the items in the history can then be copied to a sequence. So this is uh, important, and I'm going to show you how to do this. So you click OK, and we get to this uh, JW change sequence editor. And everything's empty here, and I'm going to show you how to use this. But uh, the problem is that we need things to appear in the action history over here. And the only way to make them appear is to actually run the, uh, the JW change plugin. And with every function that you run, you'll get a new item that appears in this list. And then from here, we can actually start creating groups and creating sequences. So let's just close out of here and do exactly that. We need to run a couple uh, items first. So I'm going to uh, work on this measure, which I showed you before. And I'm actually going to do the same processes with the articulation. So we're going to go to delete. We're going to go to uh, Tenuto. And we're going to apply that. Yes, really delete. The other thing we did was we went to the accent and we deleted everything on the beats or everything except on the beats and we click OK. Uh, yes. And then the last thing we did to this measure had to do with the feathered beam. So we'll go into beams and go to feathered and we'll choose uh, the retardando and on 30 second notes, right? This is how we had this set up and press apply. You just saw me do this before. Um, so now that we, so now we have this um, uh, entry the way we want it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and undo those three things to get us back to our starting place. However, those JW change um, actions have already been uh, executed, so they will now appear in the sequence editor. So now we can go into the sequence editor, and you'll see all three of those things appear. Right? This is a delete. Uh, this is the first one. Oh, it even gives you the time and everything. Um, so this is the first one deleting the tenudos, deleting the accents, and then doing the feathered beaming, right? So what we can do with the sequence editor is put this all into one function. And in order to do this, we have to have a group. So let's add a group, and I will call this new group. And click OK. You can enter a description here if you want. And the description will appear over here, but I did not add one. And then we're going to add a sequence, and I'm just going to call this, I don't know, cello part... We'll just add a description here. Um, remove arts and feather beams. So we can see that looks like. And now we have a new sequence group and a new sequence. And you can see my description over here. 
And we can edit this and, you know, if you click edit, it'll go into here. Uh, delete it. If you have some sequences that you would want to delete, you can use these buttons here to reorder them. Just kind of going through this a little bit quickly. You can add more sequences, add more groups, whatever you want to do. Um, and then we can save the sequences, which I, I will do in a second. Now, in order to create the sequence, we have it selected here. And we can just kind of choose, if we want to choose the first two, for example, we just uh, check them here and choose marked items. Um, or we could also just select all items, although now it's actually uh, giving me them all one more time. So let's delete the first two. So we'll just select that one, delete it, delete that one. Yeah, so now we have, uh, basically we have all three of these functions in the sequence, you can see it here. And you can also reorder them, so if you want to, you know, for whatever reason, just flip these around. In this particular case, it doesn't really matter. Um, but that's how you do it. So that's how you create a sequence. Uh, I just created this cello part sequence that looks like this, and we just press save. All right, and once you do that, you get a new category at the top, and you can actually see it's called new group. So this is that, that group that you just created, and you open the arrow, and you get this thing called cello part. And it will give you the description, remove arts and feather beams, right? So it will at least tell you, but you notice that you don't get any filters, you don't get any other options, because everything that you've done has been set up in the sequence editor based on how you had it set up. You know, the articulations, you had a specific filters there when you set them up originally. So th there's nothing else you can do to refilter this or anything. It's just going to do exactly the way that you had it. So, so now we can just uh, select this whole thing and choose the sequence and choose apply. And it will ask you if you really want to delete. And you'll see that all three of those uh, JW change functions that we did happened all at once. We got rid of the tenudos, we got rid of the accents we didn't want, and we feathered the beams all in one shot. So this is really handy if you've got sequences of JW changes that you use quite often. I, I can't even tell you what you should use here. It's just if you do things a lot and you want to set things up two, three, four functions at a time, this is the way to do it. Go in here, create a new group, create a new sequence, and you know, you're, you're just multiplying the power of this JW change plugin, which is already super powerful. <laughs> and you're able to do uh, multiple functions all at once with that sequence editor. So really, really, really cool stuff uh, in this JW uh, change plugin. All right, so that covers it. I know this is a long video, but I really think it was well worth it. This JW Change plugin is worth its weight in gold. If you don't have it, go get it. Uh, donate to Jari. Maybe that will encourage him, him a little bit more to start updating these again. Um, these This JW Change plugin, like I said, is a Swiss Army knife, and hopefully I've shown you why I believe that, because there's just so much stuff you can do with it. It's, it's just, I can't, again, I can't overstate how important this is. So... So yeah, so there you go. So that's JW Change. Uh, I hope you've learned a lot. Um, uh, go get that plugin if you don't have it. And uh, yeah, so there you go. So once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you soon on the next video.